SN2, E2, E1, and SN1 reactions. Let us begin. So, the best way to look at this is with a graph, or a chart, if you would say. And we will go through step by step, but we're going to start with a chart. Now, what reaction can occur at methyl? Only SN2. At primary, you can have SN2 or E2 occur. At secondary, you can have SN2, E2, SN1, or E1 occur. At tertiary, you can have E2, SN1, or E1 occur. This is a 1, my bad, and this is a 1. E2, or SN2, cannot occur at 3, and SN1 cannot occur at methyl. So remember the... Now then, how do we distinguish between these, though? Well, then we have to dive a little deeper into the rules that apply to each. So let us start with SN2 versus SN1. SN2 prefers primary or methyl-based carbocations, and SN1 prefers tertiary carbocations. So for SN2, since it does prefer primary or methyl-based com or carbocations, that means it dislikes sterics. So I like to use this anagram to remember the rules of SN2. And that is like strong nucleophiles, it does a back side attack, meaning it inverts stereochemistry, dislikes sterics, it likes polar aprotic solvents, and it does no carbo cation rearrange. Now then, for SN1, I like to use this anagram to remember the rules for SN1. And that stands for sterics, because of this tertiary carbocation. SN1 loves sterics. Polar protic solvents. Weak nucleophiles. Carbo cation rearrangement can occur, but I can't put that, fit it in here, so I'll just put re. And then resonance can occur for SN1. And we must also remember that SN2 is bimolecular and SN1 is unimolecular. Now, if we drew these out in a chart, we would see that an SN1 reaction looks something like this. And an SN2 reaction looks something like this. These are your transition states. And as you can see, unimolecular reactions have more than one transition state because each step of the reaction occurs at a different point. Where SN2 reactions, everything happens at once. Now for the solvents. For the solvents, SN2, as we know, likes a protic and SN1 likes 
protic. Now then, what is a protic solvent? A protic solvent is something like H2O, ETOH, or anything with an alcohol group on it. And an alcohol group is deemed with these OHs on the, uh, on the side of it. Ammonia, which is NH3 actually. Acetic acid. And these are gonna be your protic solvents. Now for aprotic, basically the best way to remember this is anything without an OH group or if it's not ammonia or acetic acid or H2O, it's most likely an aprotic solvent like CH3CN, DMSO, DMF, acetone. Those would be your A products. Now, when we're looking at SN2 versus SN1, we have to take into account that when it comes to secondary carbocations, either can occur here. So that's when the nucleophilicity comes into play. And nucleophilicity, the best way to determine nucleophilicity is basicity, charge. If it has a negative charge, it's a good nucleophile. Sterics, the less bulky, the better the nucleophile. So I'll put that. Smooth like a rocket is how we want it. And then the atom itself. N. And if we look at this, nucleophilicity gets better as we go down and nucleophilicity gets better as we go across. And actually, a weird rule is fluorine is a, one of the best nucleophiles in the ACS, but just ignore that. Because in our case, fluorine is a terrible nucleophile. It is not a good nucleophile. So ignore fluorine as a good nucleophile. It's a terrible nucleophile. If you see it, it's most likely not an SN2 reaction. It's probably an SN1 reaction. Now then, let's go over some examples for SN2 versus SN1. So for this reaction, we would 100% know this is an SN2 reaction because this is a good nucleophile. And when we do this, this is gonna become a primary carbocation. So what would happen here is we well, make the same product. Probably should have chose a better example. Oh, well, here, here's what I'll do. It's a good nucleophile, and when we actually do this reaction, we know it's SN2, so each step's happening at a different time. And this is actually what happens. And this is SN2, 
because this would make a primary carbocation, which is great for SN2. As we said, SN2 reactions love primary carbocations, and it's a good nucleophile. Now we also do have to remember that if it is a secondary carbocation, for example, something that looked like this, This would be a secondary carbocation, but it would most likely go for an SN1 reaction because weak nucleophiles, such as I minus, can go either SN1 or SN2. So this would be a, a unimolecular reaction, meaning that this Br minus would come off, which would then lead to this. And then the iodine would attack, leading to our final product. And the way to tell is because if it is a secondary carbocation and it is a weak nucleophile, we have to look at the solvent. And if it's protic that favors SN1. So, let's now go to SN1 versus E2 versus SN2. Now the best way to do these is when you're comparing all three is to know that if you have a negative charge, it's most likely either an E2 or SN2 reaction, unless it's secondary and a weak nucleophile, like I minus, Br minus, Cl minus, R2, P, H. If it's one of these, it could either go SN, it could either go SN2, E2, well not E2, it could either go SN2 or SN1. And like I said earlier, at that point, you would have to look at the solvent. So, if it's E2 or SN2 reaction, it usually has a negative charge unless it's those weak nucleophiles like I just stated. And then it can, it can go SN1, but it cannot go e, E2 with those. Another way to differentiate is if it's a strong... base like O minus with the methyl attached, MeO minus, it could go E2 or SN2. So let's write these rules out actually. The best way would probably be to determine between SN2 and E2 and then combine them all at the end. So E2 versus SN2. Oh, forgot primary. For methyl, only an SN2 reaction can occur. For primary, SN2 or E2 can occur. For secondary, SN2 or E2 can occur. And for tertiary, only E2 can occur. Almost put, e, almost put S into it. I meant E to only for tertiary. 
and I'll make that a little cleaner. And now to differentiate between these at each, for primary, if you're at a primary carbocation, you're trying to differentiate between S and 2 and E2, the only way it's E2 The only way it's e E2 at a primary carbocation is if it's a bulky base like TBU O- or NDA. Any other thing is going to be primary. Now for secondary, it gets a little trickier. For secondary, if the pKa is less than 9, see how I should write this out. If the pKa is less than 9, it's SN2. If the pKa is between 9 and 16, it depends on the solvent. So the solvent for E2 versus SN2 is E2 likes protic and SN2 likes aprotic. And also the same thing applies. If it's a large bulky base at a, at a secondary carbocation, it's going to be E2. And some of the examples of an SN2 with a pKa less than nine include Cn minus, RS minus carboxylic acid negatively charged and N3 minus. Now at the Tertiary carbocation, once again, only E2 can occur, and at the methyl, only SN2 can occur. This is only when comparing E2 versus SN2. If we were comparing all of them together, we would have to then do all the roles that I've already stated. But we will go over some practice problems once I go over stating all the roles for each. So, now that we know that, Let's go over the rules of the very rare E1. E1 reactions occur under very specific conditions. H2SO4 concentrate is one of those conditions. Heat with a protic Solvent is another one of those conditions. Usually toluene. And then another one is if you see DS in something that looks like, basically anything with DS is gonna probably be an E1 reaction. So let's go over some examples. Now that we know all the rules for comparing. So let me find some examples for us to do.
So, what reaction would happen here? Well, we know that this is neither E2 or SN2 because there's no negative charge. And it's not E1 because none of those conditions are met. So we have to know that this is going to be an SN1 reaction. How this reaction would occur? Would chlorine would leave? leaving us with a positive carbocation at the secondary position. However, like I said, SN1 reactions love to undergo carbocation rearrangement to obtain the most stable carbocation. So they will do that. So in order to do that, what's gonna happen here is one of these methyls is gonna come up here and take this. Leaving us with a positive carbocation here. And then once that happens, the ETOH with the O, the Electrons on the O will attack this positive carbocation, forming something like this. This would then be positive charge, though. So we would then have to protonate it. and the hydrogen would then leave. In our final product, if you're still following me, would be O ethyl or ethanol. And it is racemic also. For another example, we could do For this one, we know that the bromine is going to leave, giving us a positive carbocation. And that's going to be a secondary carbocation. So we can either go SN2 or E2 because this is technically a base. And now then, like I talked to you earlier, the DMF is what we'd have to analyze. And since this is an aprotic solvent, it's going to go... SN2. And all that's going to happen is this OH is going to come and attack with that inversion of stereochemistry.